Okay, Precal 10, here is um, just a short video on exponent laws combined. These are going to cover uh, all of ours except for rational exponents. So I know this exponent section is fully loaded and there's a lot going on. So I just have a few examples in a quick video here. So simplify. Uh, the important thing to acknowledge on this first one, the 2x all to the power of 3, is that it's not 2x as an as like an entity, right? It's 2 times x, which means it's 2 to the power of 1, x to the power of 1. So when you have a power outside the brackets, remember we power to a power, so we multiply it in. It's going to multiply into both, which is going to give us 2 cubed x cubed, and then 2 cubed is 8 x cubed. So you got to make sure you're water bombing into everything, even if it's a number next to a letter, remember that they're separate entities. Okay, that's pitfall number number one. So let's look at this next one. Again, I got to do this outer thing first because I want to bust down these brackets. The three is going to come into here, into here, and into here. When we do power to power, we multiply exponents. So now I have negative two to the power of negative nine. I have x to the negative six, and I have y to the three. So now if you recall, negative exponents in the numerator become positive exponents in the denominator. And if you have a um, negative exponent in the denominator, it becomes a positive exponent in the numerator. So the negative exponents, uh, whether or not they're in the numerator or the denominator, switch where the base is and then change the exponent positive. So in this case, my y cubed stays on top, my negative 2 becomes in the denominator, it turns to negative 2 to the 9, and my x to the 6 in the denominator. Now, when you have the negative in the bottom of the fraction, I just want you to think about this for a sec. I'll do it in this box. Negative 1 half versus negative 1 over 2 versus 1 over negative 2. These are all the same, and they're all negative. When you have a negative fraction, this negative sign can be kind of transient, right? It can go up to the top, or it can be pulled out right in front of the fraction. So in this case, it's just good practice to put it right at the very front of the fraction to signify that the entire fraction is negative. So there we go. Now let's increase the difficulty a little bit. So now we have a numerator and a denominator, so we just have to do it one step at a time. So we're going to start by taking this because I can't do anything else on the top. And I'm going to multiply it into here. And don't forget that 2, it's 2 to the power of 1. And then here, and here, and here. Nothing happens on the bottom, because the bottom is already down there. So now you have 2 to the 3, a to the 6, b to the negative 12, c to the negative 15. And then on the bottom, you have 2 squared. And now we do division of a common base. The only common base we have is we have a 2 to the power of 3, and we have a 2 to the power of 2. So when we divide that, we subtract the exponents, we end up with a 2. The exponent on the a is positive, so it stays, but both the b and the c go down to the denominator, and their exponents become positive. So that's uh, next level difficulty. So now we got one more, and, and there are a number of ways you can approach the second one, but I'm just going to show you the simplest. Um, which is just doing it one step at a time. So this one has to water bomb into here and here, and this one has to water bomb into here and here. So we end up with x to the negative 10, y to the negative 4, and then times x to the 6, y to the negative 6. And on the bottom, we have x to the negative 1, y to the negative 2. But now what we can do is we can combine the top, because we have x's and x's and y's and y's. So combine, group your... Uh, common bases together, right? So negative 10 plus 6, I get x to the negative 4. And then negative 4 plus negative 6, I get y to the negative 10. So now you have everything in the numerator combined, and everything in the denominator is already just on its own. And now we do our last step. We subtract a common base, which means we add the exponents. Or sorry, we, uh, we divide a common base, which means we subtract the exponents. So careful here, because you have negative 4 minus negative 1 which means you have negative 4 plus 1, which gives you negative 3. So we end up with x to the negative 3. And then you have negative 10 minus negative 2, which is negative 8. So you have y to the negative 8. Now, this is in the numerator, but we don't like negative exponents. So they both go to the, to the denominator. And the exponent becomes positive. 
which just means we have a one left on top. So that would be the better solution for that level. So I've added a fully loaded exponents question in the shorts as well. And it's one of the, as the name implies, fully loaded one. So it's going to be a little bit more challenging than the ones we just did here. But this is a step-by-step -step process and try to get as comfortable with it as possible. All right, thanks.